Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher Wenger. I'm a cardiologist and cholesterol specialist who practices in southeastern Pennsylvania. I also proudly serve as a board member for the Lancaster Farm Sanctuary in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. For the next few minutes, I'll talk to you about COVID-19 as it relates to animals, as well as provisions in order to prevent the next pandemic. Thank you for watching. What is COVID-19? Coronavirus disease 2019, also known as COVID-19, refers to a particular genome of the coronavirus that's new to the human population and most closely resembles that of a bat coronavirus. The virus that causes COVID-19 is thought to spread mainly from person to person uh, through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Spread is more likely when people are in close contact with one another, usually within about six feet or so. Currently in the United States, over half a million people have been infected with this virus, with over 20,000 dead thus far. Of course, these numbers change with each passing minute and will unfortunately increase before this pandemic reaches its peak. Where did the COVID-19 virus originate? Well, the consensus among researchers studying the spread of the virus have stated that COVID-19 originated at the Huan Seafood Market, a wet market in Wuhan, China. So you may be wondering, what is a wet market? It sells live and dead animals, including fish, birds, badgers, bats, pangolins, and turtles for human consumption. Water and blood splash over the sides of open tubs filled with live sea animals who will inevitably be killed. Countertops and floors are streaked red with the insides of gutted fish and slaughtered animals' blood. And turtles crawl over each other just before shells are cut off while they're still alive. Of course, live animal markets are breeding grounds for zoonotic diseases like COVID-19. However, we cannot be so ethnocentric as to presume this is China's fault. After all, live animal markets are not isolated to China. There are such markets in the United States as well. And what's the difference between slaughtered chickens at a wet market in Taiwan and the ones being killed and sold at live animal markets and slaughterhouses in New York City? How are the restaurants in Los Angeles that mutilate and serve live animals to customers any better than wet markets in Asia? So what are zoonotic diseases? Well, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than six out of every 10 known infectious diseases in people can spread from animals, and three out of every four or new emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals. Looking back into human history, we see that when we domesticated pigs, we got whooping cough. When we domesticated chickens, we got typhoid fever. When we domesticated ducks, we got influenza. And the list goes on and on. We use the term zoonotic disease to imply a disease that has jumped from non-human animals to humans. However, zoonotic viruses don't originate exclusively in wet markets. The types of animals most commonly concentrated to viral outbreaks in humans are chickens and pigs. And the United States is home to countless farms where chickens are crammed together in small cages and pigs are packed in feces-ridden sheds as well as slaughterhouses where chickens and pigs are killed on floors soaked with blood urine and other bodily fluids. So while current events have many calling for an end to wet markets and the wildlife trade in Asia, it's simply not enough. Many don't realize that according to the World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, and the World Organization for Animal Health came up with four main risk factors for the emergence and spread of zoonotic diseases. The number one risk was the global increase in demand for animal protein. So where do we go from here? There must not be another pandemic. In order to prevent the introduction, transmission, and spread of communicable diseases, humans must accomplish three major feats. Number one, wherever possible, we must reduce and ideally eliminate our dependence on animals as a food source. All protein needs can be met through eating plants without the need to rely on animal flesh. We must vote with our dollars and eat more plant-based foods. Number two, we must care about the way animals live. 
Human and animal communities must be able to coexist in a symbiotic relationship. Caring means change. Change in the way animals live. Make intensive confinement conditions a way of the past. We can certainly do better. And number three, advocate for the two items I just mentioned. In order to lead by example, I and many other medical professionals have recently signed a petition written by the Physician Committees for Responsible Medicine aimed at the Surgeon General to call for a ban on live animal markets. Some final thoughts. Despite the horrible pandemic we currently face, I truly hope we can learn from this experience. I'm not talking about some general provisions aimed to reduce the spread of the next pandemic. I'm talking about how we as a species relate to one another and in turn our relationship with our surrounding environment. We are currently being reminded of our own mortality and truly if we don't take care of nature, nature will indeed take care of us and it won't be pretty. Look at the current pandemic. On the national level, we should encourage the cessation of live animal markets. On the community level, we should help to change the way animals live by, uh, among other things, encouraging the removal of intensive confinement conditions of pigs and poultry. Most importantly is the individual human being. We should support vegan organic agricultural systems and sanctuaries, not slaughterhouses. It has been and always will be a buyer's market vote for change with your dollars. It's up to you, the individual, to make the personal choice to choose beans, broccoli, soy, and other plant-based proteins over animal flesh. It is up to you to consume a plant-based milk over cow's milk, which the FDA defines as the lacteal secretion of a bovine. Let that sit for a minute. By gravitating toward the consumption of a more whole food plant-based diet, think fruits, veggies, beans, legumes, seeds, nuts, and whole grains, you will feel better, live longer and get by with less reliance on prescription medication. The accumulating science behind the health and longevity of a whole plant food diet is overwhelming. Additionally, environmental concerns are a significant part of the conversation about dietary choices. Industrial farm animals consume extremely large amounts of feed, water, land, and fossil fuels and are estimated to contribute substantially to water shortages, soil, and air pollution, and yes, climate change. Eat more plants. Do it for animal welfare. Do it for the environment. And if that's still not enough, do it to meet your personal health goals and the health and longevity of the generations to come after you. After all, all of this comes down to what's on your plate. Dr. Christopher Wenger, speaking on behalf of the Lancaster Farm Sanctuary, thank you for watching and be safe.